Hi everyone, let's learn how to play Metallica's Trapped Under Ice today. This is the final track that we have to look at and we've completely wrapped up work on the Ride the Lightning album. So now we've completely looked at Kill em All as well as Ride the Lightning. You can find a link to all those tutorials in the description below. And if you want to learn every Metallica track ever recorded, then this is the channel for you. Hit like and subscribe because we are making our way through them. Uh, let's get going here. We're in standard tuning and the track opens up with this. Okay, as you might have noticed, I overdubbed a second guitar in there, which we'll talk about in a second. But let's just talk about these first four opening measures. Uh, it's kind of free timey, so you know you just have to feel it out. There's not really a strict uh, pulse going on. Um, so what we're gonna do is start with two uh, E palm mutes on the low string, followed by an open A and D. And then just bar the second fret on the A and the D strings forming that E power chord. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat the two E palm mutes going up to an open D and G. And you can see in the tab that I put the G as a ghost note because you don't really hear that on the recording, but I assume that's what he was going for just to kind of transpose that idea up a fourth to the A power chord. So you really only hear the D to an A power chord, but you know, like I said, you can hit that open D and G. It's probably good chance that that's what he was going for. So we've got this. Okay, now that's where the second guitar comes in. You hear this. Right, okay, so all of that is, you just hold the bar down a little bit, hit the low E string and slowly release the bar to pitch. And then we've got a B power chord, second fret of the A string. You're just gonna chug on that four times and then hit it once, kind of, you know, cut it short as a staccato. Okay, so nice and slow through that four measures and then we'll get into the next riff. Here we go. And then we get into the next riff that goes like this. Okay, so we have this two bar repeating riff and it plays four times and then it plays another four times with some power chord movement on top of that, but I'll perform that in a second. So let's just talk about this riff. Starts off the exact same as what we just learned. Two open E's, palm muted, and then an open A and D. So those barred second frets on the A and D. Okay, now the second measure changes up a little bit. Okay, we start off the same. Open A and D. Third frets on the A and D. Okay. And that just repeats like that four times, and then we play it another four times with those power chords. So I'll just play it a couple of times here nice and slow for you, and then we'll figure out those power chords over top. As you can see, that power chord movement is pretty simple. We're just sliding up a power chord shape on the fifth and fourth strings. So start on the seventh fret of the A string, that's an E. Hold these for a measure. Slide up the ninth fret, then the 10th fret. Then we're gonna go up to the 12th for two beats. Going up to the 15th, 14th for one beat a piece. Okay, so the first half. Okay, second half is the same. We start on the seventh fret, then up to the ninth, 10th, 12th. Okay, and then we have a quick little slide up to the 19th fret on the A string. And he does pick that twice, he slides. So we hit that power chord on the 12th fret, and then 
He picks it once as he slides, and then again. So it's like one, two, and three. So we've got two quick little picks there. You could just slide up to the 19th fret on beat three, like, right? You could do that, but on the album it is with two picks there. Okay, so nice and slow through the whole thing, and then we'll get into the verse riff. Okay, now the next section that we have to talk about is the first of three guitar solos. And underneath that a riff plays that's the same as what's underneath all three solos as well as it's the verse riff. However, at the end of this first solo, it just ends slightly different going into the first verse. So I'll give it a quick performance play and then we're gonna have all the verses and the solos figured out. Here we go. So some fast alternate picking with this riff. Metallica does use some alternate picking and this is one of those times. Uh, so pretty simple to go through though. We're basically got this F sharp power chord on the second fret of the low string. And we're just hammering on, lift your first finger so that it's an open E underneath that pinky on the fourth fret of the A. And then hammer it down onto the second fret. Okay, so you're gonna do that. And then six palm mutes on that second fret on the low string. Okay, one E and a, two E and a. And you're just gonna do that three times for a me for one and a half measures. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. And then we've got, okay, so third fret power chord on the A string, C, down to a B, one fret, one half step lower. Lift your first finger, put it back, okay? And that's the whole riff that plays three times underneath this first solo. And then uh, the very last rotation, we have the three hammers on the low string. And we just end it slightly different. We just hop up to the second fret on the A, four chugs on that, followed by a hit on that second fret power chord, the B, right? So we hit B four times followed by the power chord stab. Okay, so that whole thing, nice and slow for you, goes like this. And like I said, that B at the end, that's the only difference between that, the other solos and the verse. The, the verses and the solos, you just play that basic riff um, where we've got the, yeah, you just play that four times. So you just do this four times. And there's no other, you know, ending on those. It's just that one riff four times. Gets you through all the verses, gets you through all the other two solos as well. Okay, so now let's talk about the solo that goes over top of that riff. And I'll give it a quick performance and then we'll break that whole thing down. All three solos in Trapped Under Ice are eight measures long, so they're nice and short, but all three of them definitely pose their own unique set of challenges. So let's take a look at this first one. It starts. Okay, now we're in our friendly minor pentatonic box. F sharp minor in this case, 14th fret of that low string is your root. Uh, and we start off with a unison bend, repeated F sharp pitches, right? We're bending the 17th fret on the B string and then the 14th fret of the high string. And we do that six times. Okay, now I wasn't really gonna talk about this at first, but I think it's actually pretty important. So I'll just quickly go over the rhythm of this because it actually comes into play to really understand the last lick of this solo as well. So you'll see that I've got 
six in brackets in the tab, right? So we've got six notes over the course of two beats. Now, if you've followed along with a few Metallica tutorials that I've put out, uh, you'll be familiar with the quarter note triplet rhythm that they like. Uh, Kirk Hammett uses it a lot in his leads and they even use it in the rhythm parts. But a quarter note triplet sounds like this. Okay, so that second measure I played was quarter note triplets. One, two, three, four, triplet, triplet, one. Okay, so I'm sure you'll recognize that. Uh, and that's really what we're thinking about here in this solo. We're gonna start off with that 17th fret bend and we're just gonna think that triplet, triplet, okay, over the course of the whole measure. But all we have to do is sneak in that 14th fret. So you don't really need to think one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That's kind of cumbersome. Just think triplet, triplet. Okay, and then we're into the rest of it. Okay, so I thought I'd just talk about that because we are gonna come back to that quarter note triplet rhythm to understand the last lick in this solo as well. So really spend some time wrapping your head around that. Now, we come out of that with a very basic Kirk Hammett lick. If you've learned any other Metallica solo, then this is not gonna be uh, out of the ordinary. It's familiar territory, but to play it nice and slow goes like this. Okay, so we start off with a 17 to 14 pull off on the high string. Pick 14 a couple times, another 17 to 14 pull off. Okay. Now we're gonna come down to the B string and do the exact same thing, except we just don't pull off that first 17 to 14, it's actually picked. And pull off the second time, right? So we've got this so far. Now we just come down to the G string, 16 to 14, and we won't pull off, 16, three 14s. Right, and that's 16th notes. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Now we get into these oblique bends. Okay, what we're doing, pinky on 17 of the B string, third finger on the 16th fret of the G string, and we're gonna bend that at the same time that our pinky's holding down that 17th fret on the B. Now we're gonna actually do that five times, but the fifth bend is a little bit pushed, it's a little bit rushed ahead of the beat, right? What? And I do a little upstroke preceding that too, because there's a tiny little bit of noise on the album that I find is pretty natural to duplicate that with a tiny little upstroke right before that final bend. Then release that bent 16th fret to the 14th fret on G and then going to end that phrase with a 17th fret bend on the B string again. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up half the solo. So nice and slow, that first half goes like this. Okay, now we have... that getting into that little, you know, falling down the high string. And nothing fancy here, it's just an F sharp minor scale with a very typical shred style sequence, except that very first note, the highest note in the sequence is actually the major third of F sharp, not the minor third. So was it an accident or not? I don't know. But other than that, that's the only note outside of the F sharp minor scale. So we slide in, uh, 17 on B, 14 on the high string. And then we start our sequence. So we, it's just four notes, right? We play four notes of the scale, then go out and play another four notes, play another four notes, just starting a note lower every time as we fall down. But to get these notes exactly right, it's 18, 16, 14, 12, and then 16, 14, 12, 10, 14, 12, 10, nine, 12, 10, nine, seven, 10, 9, 7, 5, 9, 7, 5, 4, 7, 5, 4, 2, and then 5, 4, 2, open. Okay, so that's pretty much the end. Then we have to speed things up for the very last measure. But let's just play that nice and slow, that whole sequence. Okay, now for the very last measure, we have this.
Okay, so some repetition here. We've got five, four, two, and open. We're gonna play that three times in this last measure. Okay, and I find to get this to sound like the album, I pick the first two notes. I go down, up, and then pull off, pull off. So five, four, two, zero. Do that three times, and then come down to the B string, five, three, two, zero. But the last time, we're only gonna go three, two, zero, okay? Okay, now it's pretty fast, right? Um, and it seems pretty hectic and chaotic. But again, like I mentioned at the beginning, if we think of this in quarter note triplets, uh, then you can get through this relatively easily. You're just gonna think triplet, triplet, right? Triplet, triplet. And that gets you through that measure. And then as far as the harmonic goes, it, you're just gonna, you don't have to be super precise or accurate. Hit the strings hard in the on the G and the B and just anywhere kind of in that second fret, just kind of, just kind of find a nice harmonic to hit, uh, you know, and whack those two strings nice and hard, create a, a harmonic and then dive the bar. Okay, so now that we went through all eight measures, here's the whole thing nice and slow for you. Okay, then after the first solo, we get into the chorus riff and that goes like this. Now the chorus is perceptively tricky, but it's actually going back to the intro riff and using the rhythm that we had in that intro riff. So these two riffs really work well together and hold the song together, kind of glue it all together. Um, now it's tempting to simplify this riff because even on the recording, it's hard to really make out all of those double hits, but you know, it's easy to just kind of go. And just simplify it, but there's all these double hits going on. Right, okay, so let's, break this down first of all what we're doing is the bottom string fourth to fifth fret power chords okay and you want to hit that fifth fret twice and then we're going to do that again low e string palm mute and then hit an e power chord but we're going to hit the e power chord on the seventh fret of the a string so, and then let the low e string ring underneath that so you got three strings ringing there right then just go back and repeat that first measure, four to five. Okay, now. Okay, so we do this four to five power chord movement again. Two low E palm mutes. Two hits on that fifth fret. One more E palm mute. And then we're gonna transpose this down to the second and third frets and we've got that same rhythm going on there. Okay, so the first half of the chorus goes like this. Okay, and then we're into our second half of the chorus, which as we just mentioned, is uh, moving from the second to third fret with that same rhythm. So your F sharp to G power chord. And now we're Going to work our way back up. Okay, so we're kind of using that same rhythm that we've already encountered. Go two to three. Two low E palm mutes. Two hits on that G third fret power chord. One E palm mute. And then back up to the fourth and fifth fret power chord. And then to finish this off, just fifth fret. Two hits on the six. Back to two hits on five. Okay, so the whole chorus put together nice and slow goes like this.
Okay, and then we get into the second solo, so here that is. The second solo starts off with trilling on the G string, second fret to the open. And then just slowly drop the bar down as you do that. And then you're gonna let the bar up as you slide up to 16. Give it a couple of shakes, okay? So all together. And then we get into this other lick that's probably maybe the trickiest lick that we've encountered so far. And now I really don't think that he composed this lick 100%. I think more it was an idea. He had something in mind and then he just went for it and this is how it ended up coming out. So you can kind of approach this next lick two different ways. You can approach it as staying in the vibe that he probably approached it with where you're just gonna learn the overall idea and then go for it and it's gonna come out slightly different every time. Or you can go the other route and you're just gonna figure out exactly how it was on the album as close as possible and just go with playing that, right? So it's your choice, but I think, you know, for the, for the purpose of this lesson, I'll show you as close as possible, note for note, how it is on the album. And then as you're practicing that and you're getting more and more comfortable with that, then you'll be you know more comfortable to feel free to go off and just kind of improvise with it. Right. But it might take you a while just to kind of go through the way I'm showing you just to get that comfort with it. But we start off with a 17 to 18. And so it goes on the B string, 17, 18, pull off to 14. And then from there we get into this repeating pattern. Okay, so this repeating pattern is 18 to 14, pull off, and then 17 to 14, pull off. Okay, and you'll notice that I'm pulling off really quickly with that 18 to 14. It's a really quick, it's kind of how it gets the, the sound of that lick. We're gonna pull off really quick every time we hit that 18th fret. And then to the 17, and hit that 14th fret again. And that's the repeating thing. You do that three times. And then we hit the 18th fret once, and then come down this kind of a mixture of F sharp Dorian with the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. And you're going to want to put some pull offs in this. I just alternate picked it right now as I went down, but there's definitely some pull offs on the album. So what we're going to do is 17, 16 to 14 on the high string. And that's where you're going to want to put a pull off between the 16 and 14th fret. Do the same thing on the B string, putting that pull off between 16 and 14. Then come down 16 to 14 on the G string, pull off. Then we're gonna pick 16 to 14 on D, 16, 14, 12 on A. Okay, so that little run. Okay, so the whole thing uh, put together. Okay, like I said, that lick might take you a little while. It's probably the toughest lick to get uh, so far. But once you've practiced it for a while, I'm sure you can just kind of, you know, do what he did and just go for the overall vibe of it. And it's if you're not focusing on making it 100% exact every time, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. Now we get into this uh, more familiar Kirk Hammett territory. He does this lick a lot. Okay. So we've got these two beats. So we start on the 12th fret of the low string, 12, hammer to 14, pick 12 on A twice, then 14 to 16 slide, 14 twice on the D string. One E and a two E and a, right? Next two beats are 16 to 14, pull off on that D string, down to 16 on A, 14, 16 on D, 14 to 16 on G. Now, you're gonna keep that third finger there and just kinda flop it down, bar the 16th frets on the G and the B. Hit them both at the same time. Now, Kirk pulls these strings slightly down towards the floor. 
right? You're not going for any specific pitch, but it's about a half a step bend. And you're gonna do that three times. The fourth time, you're just gonna hit them and slide. Okay, so that lick. Okay, now to finish this solo off. Okay, what we, uh, we're basically just playing with an F sharp minor triad. So we're gonna slide into 16 on D and then triple pick 14 on G. Slide it down, slide back into 16 and just double pick the 14th fret. Then 16, 14, just once on that 14th fret. Okay, so so far. Now we slide into 16 one more time. 14 on both G and B. Bend the 17th fret on B. Okay, so that last lick. Okay, so now that we went through it, the whole solo together, nice and slow for you, goes like this. And then after the second solo, we get into verse chorus again. And then after the second chorus, we get into the bridge section. And the first couple of bridge riffs go like this. Okay, so we get out of that second chorus with a quick little three bar tag. Okay, and that's starting, it's all just sliding power chords up and down the two bottom strings. Start on the fifth fret power chord, an A, and we're gonna go up to the sixth fret twice, back to the A. Two hits on the sixth fret. Third fret. Fifth fret. Open E to the th first fret power chord. Okay, so nice and slow. Okay, then we get into the next riff, which is a little more complicated. Okay, so it's got some horse galloping going on here. We start with a down, down, up, down on the low E string. A one and a two. And then there's gonna be two hits on the 10th fret power chord on a G on the A string. Two more chugs on that low E, another down up. And this is probably the hardest part of that riff, getting a nice clean down up as we make a big jump up from that 10th fret down to three, two on the A string. Five, four with a palm mute on the low string. And then three, two, three, two on D and A. Okay, so, so far. Now we repeat the down, down, up, down on the low E. Okay, and then we're going from seventh fret power chord on the A string, low E palm mute, down to the fifth fret. And now we come down, we, you can fret a B flat power chord, but he really on the album, he just hits that one note on the first fret of the A string. And we do the horse gallop rhythm, right? One and a two and a three and a four and a. So down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Okay, live, James actually plays that on the sixth fret of the low string, same pitch. So you can take your pick wherever you want to play that. But I think on the album, it's played on the first fret. Okay, so that's the whole little horse gallopy riff. And I'll just play it for you nice and slow. Okay, now we get to the next riff.
Okay, and uh, that is a lot easier to pull off. It's just 7th fret power chord on the A string, 3 stabs. Down to the 5th fret. Then 3-3-2. Three, three, That's a 3-2 with a palm mute on the low string. E power chord. Right, and take note, that's those quarter note triplets again, just like what we were talking about in the first solo, right? Triplet three, four, triplet three, four, triplet three, four, and one, two, three. Right? So we've got those three power chord stabs over the course of two beats. Um, so they use it in their lead as well as their rhythm a lot. So get used uh, to and good and familiar with the quarter note triplet rhythm. Now we uh, get in back after that plays four times, we get back into the... Uh, We get back into the horse gallopy rhythm and we play that one four times but the fourth time we tack on a little tag just to get back into the third solo and the rest of the song so i'll give that last rotation with the tag a quick play and we'll break it down And then we are back into the third uh, solo and the rest of the song. Okay, so let's just break that tag down. All that we're doing is we're tacking one more measure of the horse gallop rhythm on that B flat note on the first fret. So we're doing two of those measures in total there, right? And then we go to the open A for two measures. And then we do one measure of just straight sixteenths. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So it's just straight down, up, down, up, down, up, that whole measure, uh, right? Then that little run that we've already encountered three, two, five, four, three, two, three, two. And then back to that riff that we know so well uh, for the solo okay so now that we've broken that down it's pretty simple right i'll just quickly give it a quick play for you And as I mentioned before, we're out of that into the third and final solo. So that's what we have to talk about next. Here that is. The third solo in Trapped Under Ice has some pretty interesting licks, and in my opinion, it's the least composed out of the three of the solos on this track. Almost every lick has some element of just going for it involved. So the first lick goes like this. Okay, so let's just talk about the simplest form of this lick first. The simplest way of understanding this lick is going 19, 17, 14, pull off on the high string twice, down to 17 on B, back up to the 14th fret on E. Okay, that's the simplest form of the lick. Do that three times. And then end on the 19th fret bend on the high string. Okay, so there's a little bit more going on there though. He adds a little bit of interest by introducing a trem pick um, between the pull off. So what we're gonna do is do the pull off and then put a little trem pick in as we go back up to the 19th fret again to pull off a second time. Okay, so if you wanted to get super technical, what's going on, it's basically this. We're gonna do the pull off, hit the 14th fret one time, and then hit the 19th fret twice as we do the pull off. Okay, so that's like, 
getting super technical, but you don't have to really worry about that. We're not concerned about hitting the 14th fret twice and the 19th fret twice or anything like that. Like, well, you're just gonna get a trem pick in there and it might change slightly from time to time, right? And then as you speed that up, right? It'll sound like the album as you get that sped up. Um, so there's that little element of just going for it involved there, right? He just had an idea, a cool little starting point, and then just adding those trem picks in there for some interest. Now, the next lick is really simple. Nothing to talk about here too much because it's almost, with the exception of one note, it's verbatim the same lick as what we had in the first solo. So it goes like this. Okay, I'm sure you'll recognize that if you've been following along and trying to learn these licks as we go. Um, but just to go over that quickly, we're gonna slide into 17 and up to 14 on the high string. Then we go 17, 14, pull off, down to 17 on B, back up to 14, and 17, 14 again. And then we come down, and this is where we're exactly the same as the first time we learned this in the first solo. 17, 14 on B, right? 16, 14 on G. Okay. And then we do that oblique bend, 17 on B and bending the 16th fret on G at the same time. Right, and there's those quarter note triplets again. Triplet three, okay. Uh, now, we get into one of the most interesting licks out of all three of these solos, I think, and I like this lick because it really shows Kirk's growth as a soloist from album to album. Like, if you followed along to all the lessons off of Kill 'Em All, I'd think that this is something he wouldn't have even thought of playing back on that first album, but here we are really only a year later recording Ride the Lightning and some cooler stuff is starting to creep into his playing, some different stuff, right? So it's pretty cool. Now, the way I play this lick, I'll just play it for you first. Okay, so I use the uh, economy picking for this lick and I'm pretty sure that he did as well as it's you know that's how I can make it sound like the album I'm not saying that you have to though I'm sure there's other ways that you could pick this but I think most of us will find this lick easiest to bring up to speed and to make it sound like the album with economy picking so I'll point out the picking as we go here okay so what we're gonna do is slide into the 10th fret on B up to the 9th fret on the high string now that's the, our two little pickup notes. Now we get into this and the first couple of beats. Okay, now we pick 12 on the high string and pull off 12, 10, 9. Then come down to the 12th fret on B. Okay, now this is where the economy picking comes in. We're gonna let our pick fall through the high string again and we get a quick little ninth fret. It's like a very quick grace note hammer as we hammer back onto the 10th fret, pull back off to nine and then come down to the B string 12, nine. Okay, so there's our first two beats. Okay. All right, it's all, to me, it's, it really helps having that economy picking going on. Now, from there, we have the same thing repeated three times. We just, we're on that ninth fret of the B string. From there, we're gonna let our pick fall through again. And we have a little grace note hammer again, where you hear the ninth fret briefly uh, as we hammer onto the 12th fret and we do 12, nine, tw 12, 10, 9, pull off again. And then 12, 9 on the B string. Let that pick fall through again. Let it do it again. So, and there's pretty much the lick, and now we're gonna fall down the pentatonic scale. So I'll just play that super slow for you. Okay, now let's finish this lick off. We come down to the G string, 11. Back up to the B string, 9. 12, 9, pull off. And then 11, 9 on G, 11, 9 on D, 11, 9 on A. And then we have a little slide to get into our next lick. Okay, so again, you might not have to be super accurate getting that 12 to 9 pull off on B every time, right? It's, again, this uh, lick has a little element of just going for it. Um, if you were to get this up to speed, Right, I, was, I was, wasn't even doing the pull off to the ninth fret on B there. I was just coming down to my pinky and then letting my pick fall through to the high string again. If, you know, if you don't quite get that 
uh, 12 to 9 pull off super clean and precise every time that's okay that would have been kind of the element of going for it where these licks aren't 100% written out and planned out and have to be performed the same every time right um, so that's okay if you don't quite get that pull off in there every time but I'll play the licks nice and slow the way it appears on the album for you Now we get into the last lick that goes like this. And again, this has an element of just going for it involved. And I feel like there might have been a happy accident here with this lick, because as he came out of this one that we just went through, slid up, he comes here and you hear those notes. And there's a little bit of noise as he shifts and gets back into the F sharp minor scale. So I feel like it's, is something that he might have overshot. He came out of this lick, meant to go to the pentatonic scale at the 14th fret, overshot his mark and ended up at the 16th fret, realized his mistake, and then shifted back. Um, but it works, it sounds good. It's one of those happy accidents because these notes that he started with belong in the F sharp minor scale and it sounds good still. Um, so they probably just left it because why not, right? Um, of course it could have been pre-planned, who knows? But what you hear is 16 on G, and then 16 to 18 hammer on D. Now there's two little dead ticks there, and I imagine that's as he's shifting back. And then you hear the 16th fret on G, and he starts trem picking from here, so I won't trem pick all these, I'll just show you the notes, and then I'll slow it down with the trem pick after. But the, then we hit 16 on G, and then 14, 15, 17 on B, 14, 16 on the high string, and then when he hits the 17th fret, he just slides up. You don't really hear any frets in between. It's just a random slide to the 21st fret. And then he bends it one and a half steps to match the high E on the 24th fret. Right, so there's the notes. Now to put this together, you'll just want to start trem picking once we hit that 16th fret on the G like this. Okay, so once you hit that G, just try and pick those notes. Don't be too concerned how many times you hit them. Um, and there you go. There's that element of going for it again, right? So I'll play that lick nice and slow and then we'll put the whole thing together. Okay, there's the whole solo. I'll put it together for you nice and slow. After that third solo, we get into another verse and chorus, and that last chorus is a double chorus, and then we get into the outro. So let's just play through the outro because that's all the riffs that we have left to talk about. So that final chorus ends like this with the outro. Okay, so our choruses have typically been ending with, right, with a beat of rest, and then getting into that verse riff again where a solo's happened. Okay, now this time, we don't have a beat of rest, and we just keep trucking right to the outro, right? So we go 5th fret, up to the 6th fret, and then hit that 5th fret twice, with 6 palm mutes on that 5th fret, right? And we do that three times, and then we get into a riff that we saw in the bridge, getting into the bridge. Right, we go five, six, five, six, six. Go down to three, five, and then we get into our verse riff. Uh, that one that was under the solos and the verse. Uh, and we play that four times respectively, but the fourth time we just go. Okay, so uh, we just hit a B power chord, right? This is basically recalling 
the way we ended this underneath the first solo. But that we just palm muted a B. Um, this time we're strumming the power chord. Come back down to the F sharp on the second fret and give it a little quick slide. And that's the end of the song. Okay, so that outro, I won't play the verse riff all four times, but putting it together is going to look like this. <laughs> And that is Trapped Under Ice in its entirety, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned everything that you wanted to with this awesome track. And I'm going to see you next time for some more.